This segment is sponsored by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. And by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Make sure you check out SANS 550, Active Defense, Offensive Countermeasures, and Cyber Deception. Except no active defense training substitutes. Go to securityweekly.com forward slash SANS 550 to register today. Whoa, it's a real SANS course now. Yeah. Nice. And by, of course, Tenable Network Security, the creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Jumpstart your security program today and evaluate Security Center CV, the continuous monitoring solution. Visit Tenable.com for more information. Security Weekly listeners receive 10% off products in our store with the discount code IHACKNAKED. Shop.securityweekly.com to get yours today or go to Source Boston this weekend. Larry is teaching SANS 617 Wireless Ethical Hacking... Ethical hacking and defense coming up in April. Nope, coming up in May. Nope, that's like the Austin. week after next. Yeah. yeah, Austin, May 18th in Baltimore and June 13th in Berlin, Germany, and a couple more times later this year. So that's right. Don't worry. Yes. You know, On what? you know what? I'm taking a SANS exam tomorrow. You are. Yep. For your SANS wireless 617 no. ethical hacking. No, ICS 410 tomorrow. Oh, 10 nice. That's awesome. Good, good luck, Larry. Good luck with Thanks. that. Oh. Thanks. Probably should go study. <laughs> so we can. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Larry. <laughs> Bye, Larry. Uh, so we get all kinds of stories. Oh um, man, yeah, we do. We get WordPress vulnerabilities. <laughs> Let's. What again? I'm going to start there. Yeah. Say it ain't so. Oh, it's so. It's so. I don't. Uh, I I know that we patched some stuff so that we wouldn't have said vulnerabilities. But uh, it looks like some uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities Yeah, that could uncovered. allow for administrative code execution. <coughs> oh, that, that's my favorite kind of code execution. Oh, yeah, and then really. The, then there was another one that they were saying that there was a plug-in. That was no, in, no. Wait, the, just say it is it a WordPress plugin that's vulnerable. But there was a plugin that had some vulnerability in it, and it was a big deal. But that WordPress uh, enables the plugin by default. But I couldn't find it enabled it by default in my in WordPress. Oh, so you're running WordPress now yeah, too. I Welcome to the ponage. I, I, I moved from Welcome to the ponage party. Uh, movable <laughs> type, which pissed me off no end. Uh, to WordPress because it just what happened worked. to movable type? It used to be so good. I know until you started trying to design a theme for it. Until you started actually trying to use it. Yeah, yeah. I mean it works great out of the box when it looks like movable type. But right. Who wants it to look like that? Yeah. I see. So you're 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 on the wonderful world of ponage. Yep. And I got three of them to look out for too. So. Yeah, three. So what are you doing with? The, well, you've got hacks of the matrix. Hacks of the matrix. Uh, survival nerds mm -hmm. and. There's one other. I don't remember. You don't remember your own websites. What if is someone roofing your beard? Yes. Larry, yeah. I, don't, I don't know uh, why you just don't too much use going a on. flat There's website. too much going on in his head. There's too much going on in his head. I know how it is. He's a complex individual. Yes, you've been in my head. Wait. Doesn't oh. Sound right. oh. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul Vixie. Yeah. Did we interview yeah. Paul Vixie? Of, of uh, uh, Internet Software I think we, Consortium. I want to say we did. I want to say we did, too. Um, yeah. So he wants to, and Larry, you're going to love this. He proposes a cooling off period for new domains to deter cybercrime. So a short <laughs> trial period would help detect malicious use of domain names, says Internet expert Paul Vixie. Yeah, because that would really help me. 70 domains, yeah. Um, and so they're created in less than 30 seconds for $10 a piece. And he can't find a non-malicious reason why you would want a large number of cheek domains <coughs> activated in less than 30 seconds. You know, um, for that matter, uh, why would you want to create domains with start of authority records and NS records that had very, very short TTLs? Right, right. I, I think there's a whole combination of the two. Yeah, I mean, why not? Why don't we actually, you know, filter that? Mm -hmm. I mean, set a minimum TTL as a standard across the network and say, 
Uh, if you're going to have NS records and start authority records, you have to be above this threshold. But I see what I don't understand is. Yeah, but so, that would that would kill the load balances. That that's yeah, but like whatever the threshold is, they're just gonna register write a script to register them just beyond the threshold. And does that uh, really? Well, well, does yes. it slow them down? Does it does it slow them? It down? It slows them down, right? Because fast flux activity depends on very short TTLs on on uh, on domain yep. uh, name server records. Yep. So they can, so, uh, so they can update. So quickly. they can update. So it actually would be, you know, gotcha. that, that little gem came to me just as you said it. It would actually be quite effective to have a uh, to restrict a lower, registration, lower boundary. registration of or or TTL. No, to have a low have a low bound a lower boundary on the TTL that you cannot go below. Otherwise, your uh, your response will be dropped. I gotcha. So, mm. But what about the actual re physical registra registration of domain names, Joff? Well, I think it's a. Mm, interesting idea. Uh, I think it comes. Uh, it comes, comes. Comes from the idea comes. a little bit like uh, a little bit like um, you know the whole gun owner idea, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Sort of hesitate to say it, but that that you know, hey, you bought it. You bought a new thing. Let's make sure that you're doing it right before we actually Let's make sure you're not actually drunk when you click checkout at GoDaddy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Wait, did he actually say that? No. <laughs> I you've been, you've been drunk in on GoDaddy and adding to cart, haven't you? <laughs> yes. Add to a lot. cart. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. I'm about to drink my favorite kind of alcohol. It's called a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to GoDaddy, baby, and I'm registering yep. freaking domains. Yep. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it has some merit, but, I mean, let's face it. Th there's nothing to stop people from just buying a whole lot in bulk up front, and the cooling off period expires, and then they start using them. Right. Yep. That was my point. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I think my idea in the moment actually is better than this one. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm not very objective about my own ideas, so. Yeah. Well, then. It is what it is, as they say. But, you know, interesting. Um, it, sometimes it's the simple things that can be effective, and uh, this certainly would be um, a thought to add to the, the toolbox. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, this really has little to do with security, but I thought it was cool. So it, there's now going to be an Ubuntu phone that doubles as a desktop PC. Pretty so shitty desktop PC, it's if gonna you might launch, ask me. It's going to launch in 2015. Um, it says uh, the oh, Unity desktop. Okay, that just killed it for me. Can already run across a range of devices with different screen sizes. Um, so the apps that support convergence... Bleh, um, yeah, well, that sucks. So, so we're going to have X Windows on our phone? Oh, nice. <laughs> but it, it said something about, like, you get the phone and it can broadcast the display to other... Um, yeah. So uh, Windows Phone... Uh, so Microsoft announced a Windows Phone that allows you to connect an external display, mouse, and keyboard. Um, with these universal Windows apps, change the look and feel. Um, so Canonical's been working on bringing similar features to Ubuntu... They tried to raise $32 million, uh, an Ubuntu smartphone that could work as a desktop, but they didn't meet their goals. But I was curious how they got the display, like Hex Windows, right? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Uh, but there needs to be some connector from the phone to those other displays. It's like, magically. A, like uh, Apple Airport type yes. Yes. screen sharing thing. All I right. can say is nobody's going to fucking use that. They're going to sell yeah. a couple yeah, thousand but of them. Know, we said that about the iPad when it first came out. No one's going to fucking use that. No, no, we didn't. And now everyone has two tablets. No, no. One I, the, tablet. the, 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 quite honestly, for me, the, the, we may have said that, but the iPad was an extension of the netbook. That a netbook yeah. was a small yes, laptop. because netbooks came out and small laptops came out and they sucked. And then they said, well, this tablet thing is better than your netbook. Yep, and, and, I have, then, and I have four netbooks at home. I'm sorry. But I use them. You do? I do. The lid's closed and they're on a rack, but I no. use them. No, I have one, I have <laughs> yeah. one in the Jeep. I have uh, one in the toilet. I have, uh, Do you have one in the toilet? I have two. I have an ashtray. I have in my two toilet. connected to all my ham radio gear. Not in my toilet, but next to my and, toilet. And one I use for wireless stuff. Nice. All my wireless assessment work gets done with those because it's portable and it fits in a bag and it can walk right. around. Right. Keyboard sucks, but I guess yeah, you could do. Well, I mean, Pony yeah. Express does it with a phone now. Yep. So. <coughs> Um, 
Uh, Netflix in, uh, released their FIDO incident response tool. I saw this briefly. I, and I remember when Gene Kim came on the show, he talked about, remember he talked about Netflix and yep. how like awesome they were with yep. IT? And so all I saw was it reminded me of the, uh, the old school BBS ma- mail transfer protocol, FIDO. Oh, yeah. There oh, was yeah. The, then yeah. there was that. The, yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, it's basically their automated process for handling uh, mm-hmm. malware on systems. But they've got that whole, uh, they also released their, their monkey thing, which goes in and makes changes and um, breaks stuff on purpose and then nice. shows you like uh, that you need to fix it. Chaos so that, monkey. Like, chaos monkey. You're basically breaking and fixing things before outside factors break things on you. Yeah. Um, so this was kind of interesting. It, it, this is kind of like their take um, on the malware and incident response. So Nice. Yeah. Kind of interesting. Um, we talked a little bit about how iPads crash yep. and ground dozens of American, American Airlines flights. Yep. So is it Wi-Fi or Bluetooth that the, or, or do they just get their flight information so they don't have to carry the briefcase? Or does the, I meant to ask Chris that, does the iPad actually talk Bluetooth to something in the plane? I don't know. That's a darn good question. It may t- uh, talk something at the gate. Whether it be Wi, because I know we've seen that there's Wi-Fi at the gate, which downloads stuff but it's either not to or from live. the plane. It's not live data then. It's it's something that it, it, it may not be. Yeah, and, uh, and then potentially but, live data through Satcom. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, there's then there's what's a... the end of it? They got some sort of little. Uh, they they may have an eight or two eleven sit, you know, sitting around up up front of the plane there. Yeah, something went wrong with the update on the app. That contains a map that they need. Oh, Oops. is that right? Yeah, okay. it's electronic flight uh, flight bag program. They're by doing it with the thirty five pound paper stuff kit bags that pilots use to carry um, to access flight plans, manuals, and other reference materials. Okay, so maybe not maps, but well, well, flight plans would be similar to like a map, yep. manuals, and other reference materials. So there's an app for that, and the app wasn't working. <laughs> the app crashed, apparently. Yep. They had to, what did they say, um, push an updated version of the map through another app, print a hard copy, or delete and reinstall the affected app. Whoops. So it wasn't the whole iPad that crashed. It sounded like just an app. But it, mm. as a result, the iPad was wonky, and the planes couldn't do anything. Yeah. Well, I guess they need that app to, yep. in case they have the RTFM during flight. All right, now how do we start the engines again? Yeah. <laughs> Shit. How do I steer this thing? Yeah. Can we uh, hit my uh, cyber lock well, let's, one? Let's do your stories because the you rest of mine kind of—they're uh, just—they just kind of suck. Yeah. No. So there was uh, one for the cyber lock, which is a uh, like a key fob enabled padlock. Oh, I had that one that, too. That uh, IOActive was looking at, and uh, oh, they excellent. went to go publish. Oh, some I read of their, that. Yeah. yeah. They went to go publish some of their research, and Cyberlock uh, hit gag them ordered them. with a gag order citing uh, Digital Millennium Copyright Act violations that they're not allowed to reverse. They were not allowed to inspect any of that stuff, which they saw as a load of crap. Um, and there is a brief sort of outline as to what they did out there, and it was pretty uh, pretty interesting and fantastic what they did uh, and found out that passwords are stored on the device in plain... The passcodes are stored in the device in plain text. Um, if you can observe a transaction, you can replay it. It's, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Wow. Mm. Yep. And what are the cyber locks used for? They're padlocks. They're the new generation of padlock. I gotcha. So I thought they had a specific use case for them. I don't oh, know. Oh, SCADA or something? <coughs> I don't know. Maybe that was just the press being the maybe. press. I thought they maybe. had some kind of... Maybe. Speaking of locks, though, master lock combo and eight tries or less. Yep. Well, you said you talked about that last I week. I did talk about that last week, but I wanted to hear your take on it. My th- whole thing with that story, dude, is why wouldn't you just shim the lock? Um, cause one shimming a lock makes it look somewhat suspicious. Um, as opposed to sitting there looking at your iPhone, maybe you forgot. It looks more like that you've not you're learned trying the, the combination. You, you've right. not learned the combination. And you're looking at the phone to figure it out. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, that's you're like not the, ripping a coke can apart and shimming. Right. It. Yeah. It's the difference between throwing a brick through the side window of a car. Yeah. Which causes a bunch of 911 calls right. and stuff. Well, for, that would be cutting the lock. Because versus, you could always yeah. just cut it with bolt cutters. Yep. Exactly. Or versus, or maybe even shimming and actively manipulating the lock. Right. Versus standing there with your iPhone, which would be like capturing the key fob press mm-hmm. and replaying, and then you just walk up and walk in. 
Yeah, right. you know the the technique described here is is not um, not all that different from lock picking uh, because you're you're yeah you know, it's very similar. looking for that resistance point. Yep, uh, you're, you're exploiting that. You're exploiting the design weaknesses of the lock. And there was some things said about that. That yes, the the lock that is uh, affected for this is uh, Master's uh, absolute weakest security lock. I mean, this is intended to go on your kid's school locker and, is co and it costs $3. Mm -hmm. So if you secure anything with this lock, you're a fool to begin with. But mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to, like, when I do the, the shimming with the coke can, I cut my finger every, every time. freaking time. Every time. Every time. Yep. I even cut my, hand, cut my fingers <coughs> with the actual shims because those are sharp, too. Yeah. Yeah. So this is safer. And did you see the device he built to automatically? Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah, 3D printed device with a with a servo or a separate motor, if I recall. Yeah. Yep. Oh, nice. And a mm. servo. Yep. He's, I, th oh, I think so he's going to release know. plans on that. So, so the IoT at DEF CON, is, they have a CFP for that, too? Yeah, yeah. So it's their own little village, and they've got a CFP going specifically for that village. I should submit. I have is, a talk on IoT that I haven't is, given yet. Which yeah. is why I put that in there, because I thought you, you might like to, to We're going to submit that. for the second round of B-Sides Las Vegas. Nice. Nice. I submitted to DEF CON for the uh, uh, DEF CON security, uh, DEF CON comedy inception. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how that goes. So please go bribe the, uh, the DEF CON mm. uh, board to get our panel on. Uh, let's see. Uh, did, were you looking for panelists on that, Larry? Yep, I got them. Didn't, didn't I volunteer? I think I volunteered. I think you did. And quite <coughs> honestly, uh, you, uh, I got some really awesome people. Um, oh, so I'm not on the list. <laughs> you, you never know. You may end up there as an alternate. Uh, let's see. So uh, Amanda oh, Sullivan Berlin. Uh, what do you say? Uh, that's your second string job. Dan that's what he's saying. Yeah, Dan, your second what? string. Dan Tentler, Katie Masuris, um, uh, Chris Sistrunk, and Adam Cran. You're uh, not as pretty as Katie, so you're out, Joff. And not that that's saying. No, I'm, I'm prettier. He is. He is. <laughs> Love you, Katie. Oh, Excellent. Um, well, uh, if you need something, let me know. Absolutely. absolutely. Like, uh, I don't know. New IoT Village at DEF CON. I had that story. IoTVillage.org. Yeah. Pound sign CFP. Gotcha. Submit CFP here. Deadline, May 26th. Excellent. I think I can meet that. I think I already wrote up the CFP, the CFP stuff for my talk, too. Yep. They'll, they'll want it probably in a specific format, but still. Yeah. Uh, it's really easy. Infusion <coughs> pump is hackable. Didn't we know this already? Uh, it got worse. How did it get worse? It got worse. They found that they could tell that to the device uh, oh. without authentication and then start issuing commands to it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Is this an insulin pump or is this an IV pump? It's an IV pump. It's an oh, IV okay. pump. Okay, IV pumps. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it was interesting. So Nick uh, Twitchy yeah. posted some stuff on Twitter and posed a really great question. And then said, "If it was you or a loved one, and you had the opportunity, and you had the option, get hooked to one of these vulnerable pumps, or die. Mm. Which would you pick?" Depends you what's in the bag. <laughs> yeah, just, but you're gonna die, regardless. If you don't get hooked up to this pump. Yep. If you don't get hooked up to, up to this pump, you're gonna die. If you do get hooked up to this pump, you could live, and no one could be the wiser that you were ever hooked up to one of these pumps, and no one may ever attack it. How you live? Mm. For me, the choice is obvious. Mm. Gonna, not gonna well, I mean, up that's pretty, it pump. speaks volumes about security, though. Yeah, it does. It does. It really does. Um, Google ad injectors. I thought this was interesting because did you see the latest episode of CSI Cyber? Uh, no, the last one I saw was the so airplane one. The whole premise is there's, well, they don't call it WebMD. They call it like ScrollMD, but it's <laughs> WebMD. It's really funny to see how they like name things, um, or rename things. As yeah, the case rename things. Uh, yeah. So they're on Scroll MD. So when someone's they've rigged this, hacked the site so that when someone searches for heart disease, yep. right, um, their ad uh, overlays the ad that's there, and it's an ad to buy heart medication. And you go to the site, and of course it's an illegal site, and they're selling not heart medication, medication, but it's labeled as heart medication. Dation. And it's got something in there that makes you stay sick so that you keep ordering the medicine. It's got some kind of like mold spores in it oh. to keep you sick. But it has oxycodone in it also 
to kind of make you feel euphoric. Um, so you're kind of like doing huh. the balance, so you're always ordering the medication. Huh. Interesting. And then there's the whole way they crack it. And, of course, there's ridiculous things as always in uh, sure, CSI sure, Cyber, sure, sure. but, you know, the concept of yeah, uh, either click jacking or HTML injection, neither yep. of which they call out specifically on the right, show, right. would well, let you accomplish. Which is exactly those you would, things. <laughs> To affect the way the search engine works on the site to make sure your ad comes up, too, I mean, you'd have to have, I think, deeper control of the website, in my opinion, sure. to be able to pull that off. Sure. So... Speaking of but, deep, deep, but oh, they made ahead, it Josh. so that like no matter what you searched for, basically the site told you that you had heart disease, and, then, and their ad came up, mm. so which I'm sure is polls. possible. But I mean, I don't know. At least there was a, a some sort of element of truth in the base concepts of what they were presenting. There was there, the base it was concepts. Possible. Yeah, the yeah. base concepts. Yeah. Are, but they also yeah. ascertain in that, and I want to ask you this, Larry, in that uh, uh, tire pressure monitors, yeah, use Bluetooth. Uh, not necessarily. Okay, so some of them use Bluetooth. Some of them could use Bluetooth, but I don't. Uh, the I, I don't know of any that do use Bluetooth. They are. They certainly wouldn't pair to anything on the yeah, street driving by. No, right. They no, would they, just be they, paired to the vehicle. They, they're usually some sort of proprietary mechanism. I want to say probably like 433 megahertz ISM yeah. band okay. type stuff. More, so more proprietary. They said, well, every car has a tire pressure monitor sensor, and it uses Bluetooth, and it pairs to the DOT device that's on a telephone pole. And from that, they were able to ascertain the VIN number and the owner of the car. And I'm like, hold on a second. Yeah, like now, there's, yeah. there's, <laughs> there's now, like exaggerating for TV now, and there's now, just now, like... There, there, there is some basis in reality. There's tire pressure monitors that pair with the vehicle, not with Bluetooth. Yep. There are also your pay, your uh, toll collection devices yep. that just came out in the news that, like in New York City, that they're actually using those devices to do vehicle tracking, which are tied to a specific vehicle and a particular owner. Right. So it's like a blend of all sorts of reasonable yeah. based attacks. But so it's certainly nothing some, in every single some, car. Right? No, no. There's yeah. some basis in truth to all of that description. And I, I watch all of them with some amount of skepticism. I do too. I do and, too. And every attack that they've ever indicated has some all, basis, some basis yeah. in some yeah. real attack. Right. Like the, the crashing the access point on the plane. I'm like, yeah. You of course you could do that. And they, the way they said it was like, oh, it had a whole bunch of devices that connected to it. Yeah. You create 2,008 fake MAC addresses and make right. them associate and authenticate to an access point, it'll crash. Now, the, in the juice jacking, I mean, that's yep. a real attack. Absolutely. Right, right. It, it, the thing is, they tie them together and use creative license in tying all these things sure. together. And then sure. It, but yeah. all, all the attacks are based in reality. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was interesting. Excellent. Anyway. I'm kind of like it. The CSI Cyber for me has gotten a little better. I found. Yeah, I, I think they, I, I have always the later episodes I, have been a little. I better. have as enjoyed it knowing that it's entertainment. Right. I'm we take it to a next level. Television. We take it to the next level, and we're nerds, and we Absolutely. point at all the technical inaccuracies, and Absolutely. then talk about them on our own podcast, which makes us even more nerds. Absolutely. Anyway. Absolutely. On that note, <laughs> Joff, do you have anything nerdy you want to talk about? Uh, you know, I really. Don't have anything nerdy. I've been spending a lot of time with um, with mobile lately, and it's been fun. But uh, it's, uh, I I am. Um, oh, would you have an iPhone? Why? Can I see it for a second? No. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let <laughs> you navigate. Can I borrow that? Yeah. Do you go into your location services and turn off the history of where you've been? Have you seen this? No. All right. So go into go into settings. Settings. And then go into uh, general. Is it general? I think it's general location services. No. Nope. I think it's in privacy. Privacy. Sorry. Privacy. Location, location services. services. And then uh, all the way down. System, System services. services. And then. Oh, maybe your phone doesn't have. Oh, no. Wait. Wait. Go back. What did I do? Back. Uh, no, I was there. System services, and then scroll down. Frequent locations. Go there. Yeah, look. There's all the places you've been. Nice. Imagine that. United States, 18 what locations. What was it? Isn't the foxy lady at that address? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Dude, my nice. wife showed me that. I'm like, get out. This is, this is like all the same stuff that came out as part of Creepy. Yeah. So you can, you can turn that off so it doesn't store your frequent locations. <laughs> But in it, its little SQLite database in there. Yeah. 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 I mean, where, where's it I've been? 
Where Quake, you, Quaker you, Lane. Did you spend like to home and airport? <laughs> yeah, home airport. Airport, Las Vegas, <laughs> Wayne Newton Boulevard. Where were you last? You weren't in San Diego, were you? No, San Diego's now. Vegas. Vegas. That's pretty West funny. West Monorail Way, Crooked Creek Lane. Yeah, Crooked Creek Lane. That's boar hunting. Oh, you were boar hunting. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yep. Yeah. So <coughs> it's a little trick. So wherever we just were, you can turn that off if you followed how we navigated on Larry's phone. Yep. That's funny. that's my little party trick that I learned from my wife. Imagine that. Where has Paul been? So <laughs> there's a uh, there was a great little story on uh, on the Hacker News uh, about uh, a USB kill um, device. It wasn't the one that you're thinking of. It's not the one that kills the computer. It's uh, one that's got a little piece of software on it um, that uh, will shut down your computer when you remove it. The idea being, it's like kind of a dongle, right? You dongle. D- dongle. You grab that thing and you run, and, and it kills data from your laptop. If uh, oh, it's like a kill switch. Yeah, it's a kill yeah. switch. Yeah, exactly. I thought that was a cute little story. Might be might be sort of handy. I would like an instant encrypt switch. Is what I'd like with with a with it a. Should uh, already be encrypted. Yeah. Well, good point. Yeah, yeah. Double, double encrypt switch. <laughs> well, I, I I like the one like uh, so my Pebble when I get the Pebble too far away from my phone and it can't reach it anymore. It vibrates. It oh. it, no, it vibrates to say, hey, you left your phone behind type of mm-hmm. deal. I like it so that when my... And Nick used to have this. He had this in the computer yeah. with Bluetooth on his phone. Yeah. When if I f- got too far away from my computer, my computer would lock yeah. automatically. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'd I like, like that. that. I'd like that. Yep. Surprised Apple hasn't done that yet. They probably... Oh, ha- I'm I, sure they have it with their current watch. What, and then we used to have that other one that had the... Uh, that sounded like a car alarm. Yes. What one was that one? And there was one that would take a picture. There was yes, one that, that would take a picture one. on yep. your la- yeah, the laptop. Yeah. Well, Alrighty. You know, you just liked the way it felt in your pocket, didn't you, Larry? I know. I <laughs> <laughs> so that concludes our stories of the week. Thanks everyone for watching Security Weekly. We'll be back uh, next week. And Jack and Larry are still doing. I think you're both doing some travel and serious travel yep. coming up. I'm, so. out, I'm out the next two weeks. Yes, hopefully Mr. Uh, Santar Cangelo and the rest of the cast of characters, Joff and the rest, will be able to join us. So, yep. Thanks again for watching. We'll see everyone next week. Larry, take us out. Over and out. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Joff. Have a good night, my friend.